All right, let's um, continue on this. So, how does HDFS work? So the first thing first, the most important thing that all of you have to remember is HDFS and JavaDB file system are two separate entities. We we tend to become confused when we talk about your home directory. But you have to be sure that whether it is the home directory on your Linux file system, which means the system from which you are launching the Hadoop command, and your home directory on the Hadoop file system itself. Again, those are two different things. So, so here's the reason. Hadoop takes a very straightforward approach in trying to divide a huge data file into small channels. So it, just, it doesn't have anything fancy here. It comes straight up and it just chop off this file into a contiguous block. If you have a text file and you look at the blocks, you would see that you can see that the blocks are actually sequence of file connected. If you put them together, you get the original file. So this block are split and then they are replicated and they are spread across the data nodes. So for example, let's say this file can be broken down into three blocks, 0, 1, and 2. So the first data node is going to have stars 0 and 1, 1 and 2, and so on. The number of replication is predefined by the HDFS, and user can also define how many replication they want to have. The purpose of dividing into blocks is to facilitate parallel parallelization. So the assumption here is you are doing the same task over a massive amount of data. So you can deploy the binary version of the task onto each of these nodes. Sorry, it should be the nodes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, and each of the computer binary time is going to process one block. So in this case, uh, one process is going to process block zero, one process is processing block one, another process is processing block two. So that's the one, one thing that you can do. Um, the replication is for data recovery. Data recovery purpose. Again, look at the assumption on Google. They assume that your computer node can fail at any time and the rate of failure are quite high. So let's say if my uh, program is processing on block one and suddenly this compute node fell. I will still have a copy of block zero here that I can just go ahead and send the process over and to rerun all of the computation on block data block zero. And all of this uh, phone tolerance and error recovery is done by the Hadoop infrastructure itself. And as programmer, you do not have to worry about that. And so that is the beauty of Hadoop, and that is why people really like it. You can focus more on developing the program and less on handling the failure and less worrying about the failure of the infrastructure underneath. The second uh, purpose for replication is what they call home stretching. So basically, as you are processing data, once you have ordered the data block process, the remaining blocks, the final blocks, the Hadoop will have the potential to actually deploy multiple copies across all of the copies of the block and run the same computation on the same data block in parallel and whichever complete first um, will get that result. So basically, instead of having, let's say this one is running slower, because we can deploy the other two here, which one complete the faster, it will complete the program and we just drop the other two. So, and again, the reason that I say that this is too separate is um, if you look at this data from a Linux perspective, all you see is basically a file name VLK underscore and a huge string on the back end uh, denoting which file is from and then which block it is. So everything, all the data you look at from the Linux file system are represented as block files. And only through the only through HDFS DFS command line that you can see the abstraction of the file as if it was a Linux file system. So again, two separate abstraction on the data, and they are completely um, destroyed from one another.
So let's go ahead and run this command. Um, SSH, um, SSH um, PSCI user 01 HPFS SCK slash repository slash movie land slash ratings dot CSV. Oh, I think I still have something else. Yes. Um, and then that's files plus location. FSCK is the file system checking command. So this command gives you back information about this file, uh, the information about where the file is, where the block is, which are the blocks, and where these blocks are located. So if you type in and you run that, so so first of all, this is the outcome. Um, by default, the Hadoop file system on Cypress use a 120 megabyte block size. This file is roughly about 520 megabytes, so it is divided into five blocks. All of them are okay. This is the first block, so you can see the BP114. This is actually the block name. If you look at this data storage from the Unix file system, this is what you see. This is the file name that you see. You can see that the length for each block are roughly the same, except for the last one is smaller. Replication on the Cypress file system for now is set to two. Um, This block is for on two locations. The first location is 10, 125, uh, and the second physical computer where another copy of this block is 10, 125, So this is the two blocks. That's the, this is the two compute node that store the two copies of this specific block. Uh, same thing you can see the, the other box on HDFS. Um, if you find a report, status is healthy, total block is fine, minimally replicated block is fine, average block replication is 2, default replication factor is 2, um, the total is we have 16 megahertz and 1 leg. So the file system under this path is healthy. That's what we want to see. Um, anyone not able to run this command? Yeah. Um. So now that we know how, um, so basically that was a very, very, very brief talk about the first paper of Google, talk about how they store the data and what can we do with the data. So how do we actually write program to take advantage of this block? So that's the next part of this tutorial. And um, I, make a very, I want to focus on a very important point here. Um, you have to be, you have to distinguish between MapReduce and Apache MapReduce. These are two separate things. Um, the MapReduce programming paradigm, which we'll talk about, is basically a, um, a way of thinking on how to deal with data that are separate as, as block, how to write program so that we can bring the computation to the data. That is a programming approach. Apache MapReduce 
is the first implementation of that programming approach uh, immediately after Google released their MapReduce playbook. And so, for example, the reason that we need to distinguish that is a lot of people, particularly uh, marketing people, tend to say things like uh, MapReduce is dying and we don't need that. The fact is that uh, as you start, the subsequent open source product came out quickly that was highly touted as the MapReduce killer. It's just another implementation of the MapReduce programming paradigm. The only thing that makes MapReduce killer is that it utilizes in memory operation to make mapping and reducing capability much faster than the standard uh, MapReduce. You still have to do everything with the mapping and reducing myself. So I just want you to be aware of that. 